Okay, good morning. Uh, welcome everyone to the YouTube channel of Tsarello. So, okay. We will be doing a final examination preparation for the grid tiles on this video. So, on this video, I tried to get a equation on the cash flow statement. So I want us to complete this uh, statement of cash flow. Uh, maybe just try to show the easy way on how to calculate some of the amounts, which maybe someone might be getting them wrong. And then I just hope this might help you. So here we read the uh, following information. It reads as follows. It says that you must complete the cash flow statement for the year which ended 28 February. So it says that certain figures, they are provided in the answer book. This question is of 18 marks. I have obtained this question from previous final examinations. So they say that the information is given A there. They give us the shares and the dividends. And then information B, they give us the compensated income. And then information C, they give us the statement of financial position. Therefore, here is our answer sheet. Our answer sheet's sheet is as follows. It says that the cash flow from operating activity, the cash flow from investing activity, and then the cash flow from financing activity. Therefore, we've been given our closing balances here, our balancing figures of which we balance our cash flow with the cash and cash equivalents. So I will quickly just try to show how I was going to attend to this question in an exam. So they say that the figures are not required, the ones which are shaded areas. If you can check here on your operation activities, they are shaded areas, this two. So we are not supposed to write anything here. So I'm going to say, OK, I have two columns which are missing here that I must fill under uh, the cash operating activities. Therefore, I'm going to first say, say, I have the interest paid and then I have the cash generated from operation. Therefore, what's next that I can write here? So it has to be taxation because I know that each company must pay tax at the end of the year. So I'm just going to write taxation here. So it has to be what? Taxation, the first one. It has to be taxation paid. Therefore, what is taxation paid in accounting? Taxation paid in cash flow, it is an outflow. So the second one, it has to be what? I know that there are shareholders in this business. The shareholders, they must, at the end of the year, be paid something. So I must pay them what? I must pay them in the form of dividends. So I must have what? The dividends paid. So if I had the other column, therefore, I was going to consider the other items that I can record on the operating activities. Maybe example dividend receipt, maybe example interest receipt. But then in this case, I am only required to provide for two columns. Therefore, the transaction paid there, it is an outflow of cash. And then the dividends paid, it is also an outflow of cash. Therefore, the outflows of cash, we must always show them with the brackets to show that uh, the cash of the business is like this. Therefore, now the question is how do you calculate the taxation paid? So, calculating the taxation paid here, we must have our opinion balance just like this. We must have our opinion balance and then we must have our income tax and then we must also have what? Our closing balance. So mostly uh, the income tax, most people they say, uh, or most teachers, they say that it's a cash flow generated from the statement of a financial income or what, what that, but then let's just simply call it what an income tax. It is an income tax. Therefore, here you have your opinion, your opinion, SAS, and your income tax and the closing income tax. So here the figures that you're going to use when you calculate this, you must use the figures of the SARS income tax. So the SARS income tax to calculate this. Now let's quickly show you how do you calculate these things. 
So come to your information here. They say you have a statement of comprehensive income. So on your statement of comprehensive income, that's where you're going to get your income tax. Because when you prepare a statement of comprehensive income, you have sales, you have cost of sales, you minus the two, you get your gross profit. Therefore, you add your other incomes and then you subtract your other operating expenses. Therefore, you arrive at your profit before tax. This figure which you see here, the profit before tax, this is what we use to calculate what? The income tax. So in most cases, they might give you an income tax percentage for you to calculate the income tax amount. Therefore, you're going to use this amount. And then in some other activities, they will give you in this way. So in this way, they give us the profit before tax and they give us what? The net profit after tax. Therefore, now you know that something that is between these two amounts, it is your income tax. Therefore, it means that for you to get what? To get the income tax, you must subtract these two amounts here. If you take the profit before tax and you minus the net profit after tax, it must give us what? An amount which is in between. The amount which is in between here, it is what? It is our income tax. I'm not going to add a column between them. I'm just going to show you how do you calculate that amount. So you simply going to say, okay, it's fine. On top there, to calculate my income tax, To calculate my income tax here, I'm going to say the amount of the amount of how much? The amount which you saw above there, the amount of one, one million. Let me show the brackets. When you do the one million three hundred and fifty thousand. Therefore, we minus the other amount, which is how much? The net profit for the year which is 985 the 985 okay, the 985 500 just like this therefore it's going to give us how much it's going to give us an income tax of 364 500 so let me repeat this if we check here above we have been given the profit before tax. Our profit before tax is given as 1,350,000. Therefore, our net profit after tax is given here as this amount of 985. So we say the amount between it is what? It is our income tax. Therefore, if we take this and we minus this, we must get what? The income tax. So that when we prove it, when we take the 1,350 and we minus the amount that we got between. It must give us was the net profit after tax. So if you come here on uh, the solution, you are going to say the one million that you've been given there, and then you subtract what the 985. Therefore, you get this amount. To verify this, if you say this amount of the one million three hundred fifty thousand, and then you minus this amount, you are going to get what the net profit after tax which shows that you have done the correct things. That is just to verify your calculations. Yes, it is stupid to do that because someone might say, I took this amount and I subtracted this amount, so I got this amount. So it's obvious. If I take this one now, and I sub if I take this amount here, and I now subtract this part, it means I'm going to get this one because you are now just playing with figures. But then you are just confirming the calculation if whether you did a mistake or there were no mistakes so there you are just verifying the amount that you calculated the correct amount so now you have your opening balance here they gave you the opening balance of the source income tax with regards to this source income tax i'll always use a red marker so that people can see uh, where we are so the source income tax they, they say we have an opening of 335,900 and we also have a closing of 39,100. But then they are, they say they, this one is the CR and then they say this one is the DR. What does that mean, the CR and the DR? When you say the CR, it means that this information is recorded on the current liability. And then when you see the DR, it means that this information is recorded on the current asset. 
So they will never tell you that this is the opening and they will never tell you that this is the closing. They will just tell you that this information which we have provided you here is being given from the previous year. And this information that we have provided you with here is of the current year. So they say we are doing these things of 2021. So it means that our 2020 is our previous year. In accounting, we say the previous year, it must be an opening of the current year. So 2022, 2020, it's our previous year. And therefore, 2021, it becomes our current year. So meaning our 35,900 here, it's our opening, which is CR. And then the other is the, okay, let me write here and say what? We have our opening of 35,900. Therefore, they say it is CR. I'll just do the brackets there and do this. And therefore, we also have a closing balance here. A closing balance of how much? 29,100. Therefore, they say it's a, a DR. 29,000. And then they say it's a DR. So remember I said, when you see the DR here, you see the assets. And then when you see the CR here, you see a liability. It's of the liabilities. And then when you see the CR, you see the liability. When you see the DR, you see the asset account. So now this amount of the income tax, it is simple to calculate because you just subtract the two and then you get it. But then, do we have to add the three amounts? Do we have to add 35,900? And then we add it with 364,500. And then we add it with 29,100. We do not know that. But let's find out. Do we have to add this amount or do we have to subtract it? Do we have to add uh, the closing or do we have to subtract it? Let's go and find out. There is a way to understand that. Because I think with regard to taxation pay, that's where people make mistakes. So here I've tried to show a simple way on how you can easily get that correct. If you can master this table form, then you can never go wrong with taxation paid. It looks complicated, but it is not. So now you're going to say, okay, I calculated my income tax. So we are going to write it here. We are SARS income tax. We are going to write it here. On the SARS income tax account, remember, that this SARS income tax account, it does not have an opening balance which is fixed and it doesn't have a closing balance which is fixed on the other side. So this can either be an asset account and it can also be a liability account on itself. It can either be an asset account and it can either be a liability his account on itself. So what you can always be sure of is the income tax. Income tax, you'll always record it on the credit side. So how much is that amount of the income tax? Let's quickly check, 364,500. So that amount, it is 364,500, 364,500. This is the amount which you'll always be sure of where to write it. It is fixed on this side. So the other part, the other parts, the opening and the closing, you do not know where to record them. Therefore, you must apply the assets and liability T accounts. So you are going to say, I'll start with the assets account. So you are going to say, when I record my assets as a, as a ledger account, I have a debit on the day, I have a positive on the debit side, and I have a credit on the negative on the I have a negative on the credit side. Okay, let me. Correct that again. I have a debit and I have a credit. On this debit, I have a plus. And then on this credit, I have a minus. So where I have my plus, it means I must have what? An opening. And where I have a minus, it means I have what? A closing. Therefore, with regards to the liabilities, it is the vice versa of the assets. Where I have a CR, I must have what? A plus. And therefore, where I have a DR, I must have what? A minus. If you can check on this, ledger accounts. 
where you have a minus, it must be a closing. And then where you have a plus, it must be your opening. Therefore, now we are going to quickly say, okay, with regards to this activity, we have an opening, which is a CR. Let me try to highlight this CR here. It is a CR. Therefore, it means our opening must be on the CR side. Therefore, we are going to write what? Uh, 35,900 as our CR. Therefore, our closing balance is a DR, but where? On the assets account. Therefore, you must check here. We have a DR. It is our assets. Therefore, in regards to assets, it says what? It says that the closing balance, remember this is the closing balance. It says that the closing balance, it must be on which side? It must be on the credit side. Remember this one, it is an opening balance. And then with regards to the liabilities, remember we say this is the liabilities when we see the CR. And then the, CR, the liabilities, they say that the opening balance must be on the credit side. Here we recorded them on the credit side. And then now we go on the asset part. The assets, it says that this is the closing balance. But with regards to the assets, it says that if you have a closing balance, I want you to record it on the credit side. Therefore, here you record it on the credit side. To 29,100. Let me repeat it again. You have your liability account and you have your asset account. Therefore, it says that you have an opening. Your opening is a CR. If it's a CR, it tells you that it's a liability. Therefore, if it's a liability, the liabilities, they tell you that you must record the opening on the credit side. Therefore, here you record that. And therefore, you go to the closing balance. The closing balance, it tells you that I am a DR. Therefore, if I am a DR, treat me as an asset. Therefore, you treat it as an asset. Therefore, the asset, it tells you, if you have a closing of which is an asset, you must record it on the credit side. Therefore, here you record it on the credit side. Now you have to quickly take these amounts and post them on the source income tax. Therefore, you just quickly post them. If you take it from the CR, you must record it on the CR when you record it on the source income tax. Check, here's the source income tax. So your source income tax is like this. Let's start with the liability because it's the opening. So with our opening, we have an opening on the CR. We are going to have an opening on the CR here. Open, opening. So our opening here, it's how much? It tells us that it's 35,900. We took it from the credit side of our liability. Therefore, we record, we record it on the credit side of our source income tax. Therefore, we go to our closing. We are taking it from the CR. Therefore, we're going to record it to the CR of this account. Therefore, it is what? It is the closing. Therefore, our closing here, it says it's how much? It says it's 29,100. So here, what's happening is that you are taking a month from the credit side of that asset account, and then you record it on the uh, credit side of the other account. So now it tells you that these three amounts are on the same side of the source income tax. What does it mean? It means that now you have to add all these three amounts in order for you to get what? The taxation paid. Therefore, now if you add all these three amounts, they're going to give you a taxation paid of how much? A taxation paid of the amount of four the amount of four two nine five hundred here. Therefore, now you can understand the, the taxation paid here. It has to be four two nine five hundred, just like this. This is how you, you, you will always calculate your taxation paid. Therefore, now let's go with uh, the dividends paid. With regards to the dividends paid, we must use what we must use the uh, shareholders. Let me do this. We must use the shareholders figures. The shareholders figures. The shareholders for dividends. The shareholders for dividends. 
So here you can simply just take the open balance and then you add with the current year. You add with the interim. And therefore it's going to be your it's going to give you a dividend paid. It's going to give you a dividends paid. Therefore, let me explain it why I'm saying this way. Let's quickly come here and explain it. Let me use a different marker. If you can check here, let me give you a marker which is visible. Let's go. Let's go with this one. Okay, with the shareholders for dividends, this is where we record our dividends. When we pay dividends as a business, we record them on the shareholders for dividends. Therefore, we are having a opening balance here, of which they say is double one five three hundred. So that amount of one one five three hundred, therefore, come quickly here on the information which is given number A. They say that bullet number one. They say that the interim dividends of this amount on thirty September have been paid. So, and then a final dividend of 22 cents per share was declared. So there's a difference between an interim and a, and a, a final dividend. Mm -hmm. An interim dividend, this one, it is declared after six months period, and then it is paid. An interim dividend, you declare it and you pay it because there's still time for, to be, for, for the dividends to be paid. But then with the final dividend, we only declare them and we are unable to pay them because we declare them on the last day of the uh, financial position of the business. So the interim dividends, we declare them and we pay, but then the final, they are not paid. They are only declared. So remember that the final, which is only declared, it's going to be an opening balance. It's going to be an opening balance when we prepare the books of the next current year. So here we have an opening balance. The opening balance that we have here, it is a closing from the previous year, meaning that it was a final declared. So the rule of accounting, it says that you cannot declare an interim dividend before you pay the opening. So once we see that we have declared an interim and paid that, automatically it tells us that we have firstly paid this amount of the opening. So once you come across an interim dividend in an activity, you must know your opening balance, it has been paid. Because the rule, it says that you cannot declare an interim dividend before paying the opening. So this amount of 115, it has been paid. Why? Because here we have an interim dividend which has been paid. They will never tell you that it has been paid, this opening. You will just know it has been paid because they tell me that I have an interim dividend which has been declared. Therefore, to calculate our dividends paid here, we're simply going to say, OK, we have our opening. Our opening is how much? It's 115,300. We say it is paid because the interim has been declared. The interim of how much? The interim of interim of 162,000. Therefore, we add the 162,000. Therefore, we add the 162,000. Therefore, it's going to give us a total of how much. There is no need for us to be calculating what? To be calculating the final dividend because the final dividend, it is not paid. It is only declared. So here we'll have 200. Someone may calculate it the other way of saying the opening plus this amount and then minus what? The closing. It is still the correct way of calculating that. But then this is the easy way because you will say, I have an interim which I know that it has been declared and paid. And then because of I have an interim, it means that my opening, it has been paid. 
Therefore, this is only the figures which they wanted you to prepare with regards to your case generated from operations. Therefore, you can quickly come here and check your cash flow from investing activities. Therefore, what do we record with regards to the cash flow from uh, investing activities? The cash flow from investing activities, the business invest in buying what? The assets. So when we talk of the cash flow from investing activities, just in mind, know that we are talking of the property plant and the equipment. In fact, we simply say we are talking of the note number three of the balance sheet, the fixed asset note. Some people, they call it the tangible asset. But that note number three, it is your cash flow from investing activity. And therefore, it is also the investing activity part. We have the investment, the investment. You can add the investment. Therefore, when you check on this activity, on your statement from the statement of financial position, we are not provided with a non-current assets. We are not provided with a investment. And then we are not provided with anything which uh, affect our investing activity. Therefore, what I can just do here is just to write that when you see the cash flow from investing activity, you are seeing what? You are seeing the non. Seeing the non current liabilities, everything which is on the non current liability. Everything which is on the non current liabilities. This is the non current liabilities. What do we what do we mean when we say this is the non current liabilities? The investment part. Invest the investment part and the tangible assets. And the tangible assets. Remember the investment here, they can say, uh, maybe they can say fixed deposit on the other activity. Fixed deposit. And then this fixed deposit, remember, it can either increase or it can either one of the two. So what do we mean when we say it increase? So if you decide to increase your investment, it will be an outflow because you decide to increase your investment, it will be an outflow. For if the fixed deposit matures, it means you are receiving something from that investment. Therefore, it will be an inflow. Therefore, with regards to tangible assets here, that's where you're going to have Part of the replacements of assets. Replacement. Replacements of an assets. And then you'll have an addition of an asset. You'll also have proceeds of a on the sale of an asset. Sale of assets. So because of this activity does not have this, I'll just state these things. So when you replace something, it means that you are paying, therefore it's going to be an outflow. So when you buy something, in addition, it means you're buying something, so it's going to be what? An outflow. So the proceeds on sale, it means you're selling. When you sell, you are receiving an, an, an income, therefore it's going to be what? An inflow. Remember that the inflows, they are out of the market. So this is what come from consist, consist of the investing activities. Our cash flow from financing activities here, we're talking of the shares and then the long-term loans. So we will start with the shares. That's the first part which we'll start with. Remember that the business can either issue shares and can also repurchase the shares. So let's quickly go up here and then we check the information. We have our ordinary share capital here. This is what helps us to calculate our ordinary shares which are issued. Therefore, here we have uh, the shares and dividends. They say that at the beginning of the year, on the 1st of March, 
we had 800,000, which is where, which were in issue. And then on 30 June, we decided to add new shares, which were issued. And then on the 1st of January, we decided to repurchase 30,000 shares. So at the end of the year, therefore we have how much? Let's see. We can quickly calculate what we have here as the balancing figure. We had 800,000. Therefore, we make an additional of 100,000. And therefore, we repurchase 30,000. Therefore, it means uh, that amount which is the missing figure then, it's going to be an amount of how much? 870,000 shares, which they are in issue at the end of the year. So, Uh, we will simply calculate this amount of shares which are issued. So how do we calculate that? Simply going to say, okay, it's fine. At the end of the year, given this figure here of the ordinary share capital, always when you want to calculate your shares issued, you must use this share builder's capital. So I'm just going to use what, which color? Okay, this color. It's, it's visible, this one. So we have a, a closing amount here of 7,395,000. So the 7,395,000, I'm going to quickly say. So I have what I need the shares which are issued. I have the shares which are issued. How do I calculate this? I have my shareholders capital of seven three of seven three nine. Yeah, seven three nine. Five hundred. Is it five hundred? This. Okay, we know that we have our closing balance of this much. Okay. So we have our closing of seven. And five, one, two, three. Before we also have an opening. An opening of how much? An opening of six. Four, one, two, three. Therefore, between here, what happened between? We had a a repurchase. We had a repurchase. We had a repurchase. How much? We yes. Therefore, we also issued something here. This is what we need the issued part here. The issued part. This is what we need. We need the amount of the issued here. So we simply want to say, Okay, let's firstly calculate our repurchase in order for us to get that. So for us to calculate the repurchase, we must firstly get what? We must firstly get the rate here at the end of the year. We must firstly get what? So here at the end of the year, we were able to sell 870,000 shares so the 870,000 shares which we sold they gave us a total of how much it gave us a total of 7 million this amount here they gave us a total of they gave us this total here the total of 7 395,000 therefore if we divide this if we show calculations and then we say the seven, three, nine, five, one, two, three. Therefore, we divide this by the number of shares, which is 817,000. Therefore, how much per share? How much per share? It's going to be 8,50. Therefore, then we know that our repurchased here. We simply gonna say multiply by 
8,15. Therefore, it's going to give us an amount of how much? It's going to give us an amount of 2. Therefore, now we must get what? We must get a, the issues, the issue here, the issue of how much? The issue of shares. So we need the figure, the amount in total of this. How much did we receive on this amount? So we're going to say our opening but it's simply going to be easy because we're going to say we have our closing our closing of 7 3 and 5 1 to 3 Therefore, we add what the repurchased because the repurchased they are always in brackets when we calculate our information. So the repurchased here we're gonna say oh no sorry two double five and then one two three in the brackets. So the repurchased we always minus them. Therefore, we're gonna add them back. When we add them back, we're gonna subtract what the opening. So, one, two, and one, two, three. We're going to add, we're going to get the amount of one, 250,000. This is our shares issued. So, here, our shares issued here, you will have one million thousand as much as an inflow this will be we are now receiving cash remember if the business is issuing shares to the public they are receiving cash when the public comes to buy those shares they receive what the cash is an inflow to the business yes the shares they've been issued but then the effect of cash what happens with the cash the business is the one which receives what the cash do not focus on the shares that are issued out there, focus on the cash that is being received. So, and then uh, the next part here, we will show what the repurchased. So we must show what the repurchased figure. So when we show the repurchased figure, remember when we calculate our ordinary share capital, we say we must record it at an average share price. We must record it at an average share price. But then, when we record it on the income, on the on the cash flow statement, we must record it at what? At the total. No longer at the average, but at the total. So let's do the repurchase here. Repurchase. The repurchase shares. Some people they call them the buyback shares. So these buyback shares. They are of 30,000. This 30,000 at an average, already we know that at an average, it is of 8,50, which gives us how much? Which gives us the amount of 255. And then there was, they were purchased at how much? The total. Here on top, they tell you that on the 1st of January, there was a repurchase of 30,000 shares at 1,20 more than the average share price. So we are left to show the amount of 1,20 cents. We simply want to say uh, we add the 30,000 if we multiply by 1,20. Therefore, you are going to get how much? You are going to get an amount of if you say thirty thousand, the format by one comma twenty, you're going to get an amount of thirty six thousand. So if you take thirty six thousand now, and you can say thirty six now, okay, you can say two double five triple zero. Plus thirty six thousand. That's what's going to give you how much? Two thousand five to three. 
plus 36,000, therefore it's going to give you 291,123. Now, your repurchase here is 291,123. For an inflow or an outflow, when you repurchase, it means the shares will belong to the business, but then they are using the cash to buy. Therefore, it's going to be what? An outflow. So this might confuse you because someone might argue saying that, okay, the business is purchasing its own shares. Where does the money go to? Because of when the public purchase, the money is an inflow. But then when the business purchase, where does the money go to? Does the money go to outside the business because we say it's an outflow? No, at first we must apply the rules of accounting, which says that you are repurchasing. If you are purchasing as a business, it means that the bank is affected. At first, the bank will be affected on the credit side because you are purchasing something. So we are showing that effect, the first effect that you are purchasing. So this is this will always be an outflow. The outflows, I'll show them with the, uh, the brackets, yes. So what's next? On this question that we must write on this uh, on this cash flow from finance and activities remember the cash flow for finance and activities here let me do it a note here but it has to be your ordinary share capital it has to be your ordinary share capital the ordinary share capital account that ordinary share capital account, you need what? You need the shares issued. And you need the repurchase. And you need the repurchase on these two. You only take these two. You need the shares issued and you need the repurchase. And then the other part, it will be the loan. You need the loan now. You must go and check the loan. So on the loan, it will tell you whether you are taking a loan or you are paying that loan. So let me get it. And then on this loan, it's either you increase or you decrease the loan. So if you decrease the loan, we'll call it what a repayment because you are making it. When you decrease it, it means you are paying it. We call it what repayment. So that's it. And then quickly come to the information above here. And then you will check here. They say we have loan from Shark's Bank. So the loan from Shark's Bank here, let me use a. Maybe something which can. Okay, this one. A color. Therefore, on loan here, it shows that. When we opened our business, we are owing this the whole two million twenty thousand. This is what we are owing sharks. But then, at the end of twenty one, we are no longer owing them two million two hundred, but we are owing them one million six hundred and fifty. Therefore, what happened here? Is that loan has decreased. Remember that a decrease is a what? It's a repayment of loan. So here we are going to have a repayment of loan. You better see what I'm giving a repayment of loan. Payment of loan. How? Two million two hundred thousand. For you minus what? One million six hundred and fifty. For how much did you pay on this loan? You were able to pay five hundred and fifty thousand. This is what you managed to pay. If you are paying, it's an outflow. Remember, do not forget. The signs are very much important when you prepare a cash flow. Because the failure to put this amount in brackets, it means it will be marked wrong. So, before you'll be done with this question, what is left for you is just to balance. But before we balance, let's quickly say this. When you prepare a cash flow from operating activities, this is what will be affected. The interest paid, the taxation paid, and then the dividends paid. These three will always be outflows. Always, there will always be outflows. This time. Therefore, here you have a cash flow from investing activities. On your cash flow from investing activities, 
the figure is provided there, but then you must know that here it is your non-current liabilities. On your non-current liabilities, you need your investment or your fixed deposit. And then the investment can either be an outflow or an inflow. If it's an, if it's an increase, it's an outflow. A decrease, it's an inflow because it is maturing. Therefore, you can either have tangible assets, effects, the replacement, therefore the addition, therefore the proceeds. And then here you have your, your cash flow from financing activities, of which it will be affected by your ordinary share capital. And then on that account of ordinary share capital, you will only take the shares issued and the repurchase. And then the other one, it will be loan, which can either be repayment, it can either be an increase in that loan. If it's an increase, it means you are receiving money, therefore it will be an inflow. So the repurchased here, the repurchased of shares here, what I can simply show is that the repurchase here, you must understand that you record them at the total rate, at the total, not at an average. We record at an average in the shareholders' capital in the ordinary shareholders capital. But then when you prepare this, you must show it at the total amount. So that's it. And then here you will have your net change in cash and cash equivalent. So with regards to the net change in cash and cash equivalent, you must get this formula. The formula, it says that you must have the opening and then you minus the closing. Have the opening. Let me write it in full. Therefore, you must minus what? Therefore, you'll get what? You'll get a net change. But then, this part can either be affected by what? The cash and cash. Cash and cash equivalence. Remember what forms cash and cash equivalence. It is the cash flow. It can be the cash flow, and then it can also be what? It can be bank. Then this bank can either be favorable or it can either be unfavorable. So, in some of the activities, they won't give you the cash and cash equivalent, but they might give you one of these. Maybe some of the, of the figures I missed, but you just need to find out or now what contributes to the cash and cash equivalent. So in this activity, let's go and check. Do we have the cash and cash equivalent? So our information in here, it says that we have a... Let me of financial position. We have our bank overdraft here. Can you use a mark? Huh? Can you use this one? We have our bank overdraft, and then we have our petty cash here. This is the form part of our cash and cash equivalent. So we're going to use these two to calculate our closing balance. There. So when you check here, you have a bank of a draft of a 95,000. The bank of a draft, remember that it has to be in brackets. So it means this bank of a draft here is in brackets. So, and then the petty cash and the cash flow here, we have 20,000. So you're going to say, okay, I have a bank of a draft of 95,000 balances. So it means I must start by saying I got my opening here. When I record my opening, it means I must say what? I understand this. When I record my opening, I must say I have a bingo overdraft. I have a bingo overdraft. 
5,200. Therefore, I have a, a, a cash. After having this overdraft, I got a cash. I just see petty cash. I got a petty cash. Thousand. But then my overdraft here is in brackets. And then this one is in brackets. So can you see that the petty cash is going to subtract what our overdraft? It's going to decrease our overdraft. So it means that we were able to get a cash. The cash that we were able to obtain, when we sent it to bank, they said, oh, you were still owing me 95,200. So it means I'm going to take it. It belongs to bank now. It does not belong to us. Therefore, how much do we left owing these people? We are left owing them an amount of how much? Of uh, 75,200. This is how much we owe them with regards to our bank overdraft. So our opening balance in bank is an overdraft of how much? Amount of 75,000, 75,200. This is what we owe the bank now. Therefore, at the end of the year, what happens? At the end of the year, if you check here, but not given petty cash, and then here our bank overdraft is zero. So we're going to check. To calculate this now, we have to firstly use this uh, closing balance as the balancing figure now. Why are we saying it's a balancing figure now? It's going to be a balancing figure because you've been given you have been given the amount of operating here. The total of operating, 1,180,000. One, one, one you've been given this amount here. So the amount of which you have been given here, you're going to take this amount and then you minus this one. Okay, let me just highlight and then make use of this. I'm going to take this amount and then minus this one. The so when you minus this one and then you're going to you need to get what the total of your financing activity. Well, let's get the total of financing activity. When you calculate that your total of financing activity, it tells you that you arrive at a positive amount. Positive amount of the cash flow for financing activity, a positive amount of. 409.23. Therefore, you're going to get this amount of. If uh, you add this amount, if you add the three amounts which are highlighted in the same color, therefore, you're going to get the net change in cash and cash. The net change in cash and cash of how much? Of 269.23. One, two, three. I'll also highlight it in the same color like this. Therefore, now you have to take this amount here, the net cash and cash, therefore you minus this one. Let me, should I highlight it? If I highlight it, let me use this thing. You minus it and then you're going to get the cash and cash at the end of 193. Therefore, now if you can apply what they say here, they say that the opening balance, it, you, minus, you minus what the closing and then you get the net. So you have your opening balance here, your opening balance, which is negative. And then you have your closing balance here, which is positive. But then there is a negative, remember, a negative here, which it says you must always minus. So this negative, which it says you must always minus, now you are having a negative figure. So now the negative plus the negative here is going to give you this amount. So now if you say the negative amount and then you plus this one, it's going to give you what? 269,000. Why are we saying plus? Because now you have two negative signs. You have a negative figure and you have a negative as the rule which is always there. So now here's uh, the important part. The important part when you write your answer, remember, is always to show the calculations with regards to this to obtain marks. And then the other one is to consider that they're going to be principal marks. So the principal marks are here. 
the principal marks are here. You have calculated your financing activity. And then you have, you have got this amount of shares issued. And you've got this amount here of repurchase shares. And then you know that to get this amount here, you must add this three. So this amount here will always be a principal money because you have added those three amounts. You've shown the calculation already. To get this amount, I have added the three. So when you add this amount, uh, which, okay, let me just use a, this one. When you add this amount and you subtract this amount, and therefore the other one is this one, the three, you're going to get uh, this amount of 409. This amount here, it must be a principal mark. It's those amounts which they have uh, like this. So they will always mark you correct. So just don't be lazy to calculate. Calculate and apply the correct figure here. If the bigger amount is in brackets, therefore you show the brackets here. You take the sign of the bigger amount. Because at first you'll add the two amounts which are in brackets. You'll add this and this. Therefore you minus the positive amount. And then you take the sign of the amount, of the bigger amount. Therefore you write it here. Therefore you get a mark for doing that. Even here, if you had things you were going to do this and you add whatever that you've calculated and then you place it here and then the other principal mark it will be here on calculating this net change in cash because you understand that i have to take this and add it with this one therefore it means you must get a mark for doing that this amount here you must be marked correct therefore in fact when you enter into an exam room when you see the question of a when you see the question of cash flow estimate, the estimate is that you must be sitting at four principal marks. So you must know the basic rule of uh, calculating these amounts. You might be sitting at four marks. So this question, it consists of 18 marks, meaning you are writing for, you are writing for 14 marks. The four marks is just given to you. You are writing only for four, for 14 months. And then on that 14 months, you are totally sure that uh, on your calculation of taxation paid, you're going to get it correct because you're going to understand that above. Therefore, it's going to be almost four months. Therefore, it means you're writing for 10 months. So because this one, you are sure you're going to get it, this part. You are totally sure that you're going to get this part. Even this part, you are totally sure that you're going to get it because I think it's the simplest one, this one, of calculating it. Therefore, it means now you are writing for how many months? This part, it was for two months. Therefore, you are writing for eight months. And then the eight months in these shares, the repurchase, you'll always get it correct because you'll calculate it at an average and then you add the other one which is left. Therefore, can I do this? Okay. Therefore, you'll be left with how many marks? Therefore, it means you'll only be working for this one. Therefore, you can always get total on this amount, on this calculation of the cash flow. If you only follow. Yeah, that's it. And then this this part of what you know, that's it. Okay, the other part is this one, which says, uh, remember there are marks of which they mark you if a uh, part of you, I remember, let's say, let me make an example. Let's say this amount of 291,000 is around here when we're doing the calculations. They mark the part marks. On the other marking guides, they say that uh, if part of your calculation is correct, then you must get a mark for that. Let's say you got this one correct here. Let's say you got this one correct here. If you got this one correct here and you were unable to get this one correct, you were unable to get this one correct. 
Let me highlight it with the different mark. You were unable to get this one. You were able to get the 255, but you were unable to get the 36,000. So they're going to give you a mark for this one. At least you'll have a mark. So just try to show the calculations. And the mistake that uh, most learners make in metric is that they do the cal they do the calculations on the calculator, and then they forget to write it down. Just write everything down. You are allowed to write everything down in an exam. Just show the calculations so that you can obtain the part marks. Then thank you. And then what you can what we can do from today because this is my first video. Uh, you can just comment uh, and then subscribe and then if you have an activity which you want solution on that you can simply just uh, you can simply just share that question and then we'll do a video on that on this drone on this cell phone number 071408043 this contact and then you share an activity which maybe you need clarity on and then we can simply just do that at iia mr t thank you for watching the video please subscribe like and then comment Thank you.